Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. 10 o'clock service in the house. Yeah, man, I tell you, you guys are like lit. Like nobody's business, in a good way, not that, not, not the lit before Christ, not that lit. You're, you're under a new influence, the Holy Spirit influence, right? Well, it's so great to see everybody. We had a great 8 a.m. service, and I know we're going to have an awesome 10 o'clock. Um, I know it's the wild card, and, and we're just, you know, just allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us in, 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 in different messages every single week. And I know and I believe that today, if, if you really have ears to hear what, what God wants to say to you, you will leave this place um, stronger. You'll leave this place a lot wiser. And you'll definitely leave this place uh, with vision for, for your next season. So let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the word that you bring to us every single week, Father, uh, through whichever speaker that we have here. I thank you that every single time that your word is open, it is our burning bush. And, and like Moses, we encounter you, Father. And so, Lord, I pray that today that we would have a burning bush experience where we will hear a word from heaven, where an assignment will be given, where an answer will be put before us, Father. And where action will take place. And so, Father, I pray that if anyone walked in with even uh, sickness, disease, any pain in their body, Father, I pray you heal them right now in Jesus' name so they can enjoy what you want to say to them. And we just give you all the glory and all the praise. And, uh, and we cast every care upon you, every worry. Come on, say it with me. I'm focused. Come on, you got to be focused. You got to be in it to win it with Jesus. Are you guys ready for the word? All right, go, go to John chapter 1. Stay in John chapter 1 and just park there. If you have a Bible and, uh, and it turns pages, wow, that's a miracle. You know what would be a really good app if there's any, uh, any app developers out there? I, it, I'm telling you, you'll make some serious money if you do it. What if you created an app that, that had the Bible, but it actually, like, when you, when you were reading it, or if you're reading it, you can actually, like, you know how it has the arrow to turn the page, but it actually makes the sound of a turning page. That, that would be, that's a million dollar idea maybe right there. I don't know. Somebody can take it and then just share some of the proceeds with me and we'll be good. Uh, how many know that God wants to lead you in a direction of potential. How many believe that? That God really does want to lead me in the direction. God has a direction for every single one of you. And he wants to lead you in the direction of your greatest potential. If you read the Bible, every single story in history, God was always leading his people with direction. Every single one of them. There is not one story of a man or woman that God was not trying to give them direction based on the potential that was inside of them. As a matter of fact, if you, if you take the story of, 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 of Israel and when he brought them out of Egypt, he, he kept trying to show them. He kept telling them, I want you to see what I want to give you. I want to give you the land of Canaan. And, and we know that he sends out spies and, and the spies, they go out, 12 spies. And so that means that there was 12 different type of tribes that went out there. Leaders, leaders. These, are, these weren't just anybody's. These were people that, that had a relationship with God, that, that had encounters with God, that worshiped God. And these 12 men, these 12 tribes, they went into this, this promised land and God God said, I want you to see what I want to give you. He started telling them, this is the direction I want to take you. And this is the potential I see inside of you. And they all came back. Ten came back and said, we can't. And two came back and said, I can do this. But how many know that the majority always has the final say, which is sad sometimes. And they said, we see ourselves like grasshoppers. They could not see the potential that God had inside of them. And I'm not afraid to say this. I know for a fact that when you think about the church, the, the, the church of today is, is not very well respected in this world. 
the church of today is very, very much looked down upon. They see when people hear about a Christian, they think, you know what, uh, no potential, uh, no greatness, uh, uh, no, no, uh, no, no aggression, no, no, no progression, no, no just no vision and that that's what people think about the church they think they think uh, 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 that the church is just this weak uh, no power uh, no influence type of, of of organization but the reality is is that if you have Christ in you my God we should be the most prosperous we should be the most the most successful people not because not because of our of our talent or our gift but because Greater is he that lives in me than he that's in the world. That's what the Bible says. But isn't it so true that so many times, you know what, we, we read the Bible, we hear messages, and, and you, you can be in a place where you're just so exhausted, you're tired, you've already heard that, and nothing's changing in your life, so messages don't even move you. The Word of God doesn't excite you. Nothing motivates you, and you're just kind of in this lull where the enemy just keeps lulling you to sleep, and you're just kind of just going through the motions. You walk in, you sing you give your tithe or you serve but you go back and you're back into into reality of the world where you're just like nothing's really happening uh, are you here this morning and so you have to understand that God wants to place you in the direction of the potential he put in you so the way I see this is is God saying but first Mauricio you know there's a lot of things everybody wants here you know, I want to I want to start that business. I want that house. You know, I want that marriage. Uh, I, I want those kids. But but how many know that with anything that God gives you, there's always going to be a season of formation. God has to form you. So when we first get saved, we get we start out like this big old ball of just nothing. And you know what God does? He says, OK, you really want this? OK. And he just starts like. Ah, forming you and shaping you, right? Hey, man, as long as I'm in the hand of God, go ahead and shape me, man. You know, it's okay, God. Do whatever you want. And at first, you may look like a cat, a horse. I don't know. But you just, he's forming you. Shape. And, you know, and it hurts because it's like there, there was nothing here. And all the God's like pulling, stretching you and stretching you like, ah, it hurts. And, and, he, and, but, you know, but he's developing you. He's growing you. He's stretching your faith. He's stretching your belief. He's stretching you in your giving and your serving. He's stretching you in, in many areas of life and it hurt and you're but you finally see the fruit and you see you see what God has done and you're excited but let, let me tell you something this is where where most people uh, get in a place that they call ever say they call. they call God didn't call it they called it stuck I'm stuck how many have ever said that I'm stuck okay well guess what there is no stuck with God there's no such thing as stuck Show me somewhere in the Bible. Show me a I double dog there. Show me a verse in the Bible where God left his people stuck. Any theologians in the house today? Find me a verse. There is no verse in the Bible. There is not one man or woman in the Bible that was being formed that was ever in a place called stuck. We came up. They came up with the word called stuck. We, as a matter of fact, we, we, we call it deserts and dry seasons. But the, this word stuck is what people keep using. Anytime something's not working for them, they just say, I'm stuck. But God doesn't stuck anyone. God stops people. And the stop is where is where the formation starts again because once he already began to help you grow in different areas of your life, once you've conquered and you've overcome some temptations, some, some issues, some troubles, some challenges, let me tell you something. God will not allow you to just stay there. God will begin to reform you all over again. And he'll begin to start things and, and move things around. Some of you have been not stuck, but you've been stopped for too long. You're comfortable. And if you don't understand, comfortable is a sin to God. Because if comfortable would be like, the, like saying uh, you're stagnant water. And what does stagnant water do after a while? It stinketh. Amen? When, when, you just, 
when you just stay in the place of comfort, there's no movement. There's, there's no progression. There's no direction. It just stays there like a puddle. And, and eventually, when you stay there too long, you begin to stink. You just, life stinks. You know, uh, career stinks. Uh, ministry stinks. Leadership stinks. But the, the reality, it's not that God has created you to just stay there stuck. It's that we just have allowed ourselves to just be so comfortable with our status quo that we don't see any more progression or even growth in our life. And God's saying, I'm a God who is constantly pointing you to directions that's going to bring out the best potential out, out, inside of you and outside of you. That's what God wants to do. As a matter of fact, look at John chapter 1. You there? It says this. Now, because now, I want to give you the, how do we do this? How, what, what do we need to do? Because maybe you're someone here that you feel you're stuck in your marriage. You're stuck in your parenting. You're stuck in your career. Man, you're stuck right now. Maybe in your spiritual walk, you're stuck. Uh, I know that the children of Israel, when you read the story, they, they, they were stuck physically. They were stuck uh, not only uh, uh, physically, but, but they, were, they were stuck in, in, in such a place where, where they were exhausted and tired because they had just come out of the, 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 the slavery of 400 years. And, and now they're, they're in the wilderness for how many years? How many years were they, were they stuck? 40 years, man. They're going around in circles. But guess what? God always has a word. And look, look at this. Let's start with this foundation, John 1. It says, in the beginning. Everybody say, in the beginning. So, man, I'll tell you, right here, Jesus brings it back to the beginning. He brings it back to Genesis chapter 1. He said, in the beginning, guys, he said, was the word. Was what? Word. Was what? Word. Come on, we're going to work today. Was the what? Word. The word. It was the word. It was the word, the word that you and I read. He said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was. So, every time you open this word, what is this word? God. And I believe that God wants to give you a God word. So stay with me. He was with God in the beginning. So that may, basically means that when God began to create everything that we, we, we see in existence, uh, the word Jesus was right there next to the Father. And look what it says. And he was with God in the beginning. And through him, all things were made. All things were what? Made. Did it say some things were made? No, okay, so guess what? Your healing, Jesus is the only one that can make that. All things were made. Your, your, your breakthrough, your, your, your financial breakthrough, your, your business uh, uh, exploding to progress and, and success, only Jesus can make that. Now, now, Satan has temporary blessing, okay, where you feel good for a minute and it's temporary, but then it brings sorrow. But God has, God has eternal uh, breakthrough and blessing, and, and his blessing comes with joy. I mean, just look at the suicides in the last week. There's not enough money in the world that can keep you happy. Amen? And so, you know, we pray for those family, and it breaks our heart. But the reality, that money, money doesn't make you happy. Jesus is the only one that can make you whole, make you heal. And, and you know what? And his riches uh, are without any sorrow. And so he says, and through him all things were made. And without him, nothing. Nothing was made that has been made. And so this brings me to the point of what I, I spoke on last Sunday. If you were here, I said that, that faith is what becomes the bridge that gets me from where I am to where I want to be. How many remember that? Okay, great. How many weren't in church last Sunday? All right, get, get a picture of these guys. They just... So, so, so the, the problem when, when you're believing for, let's say, your, 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 your breakthrough in your health, th this is where I'm sick. And, and, and you and I, we, we're believing God for healing. The, the issue is, is not the sickness. The issue is the in-between my, my sickness and my healing. And when you've been in a place of sickness or whatever challenge for, for so long, you can begin to adapt to 
the culture or even learn how to adapt to your sickness. You can even learn how to coexist with your drama and your trauma that you become so comfortable. And because you're not seeing any breakthrough, it doesn't matter how many sermons you hear. It doesn't matter how many uh, uh, scriptures you quote. It no longer moves you anymore. It's just like you're just coming to church only because it's a religious thing that we do as a family. We don't come to church because I'm expecting to encounter God. We come to church because we want to make sure that we're doing the good thing on Sunday. We want to make sure that our children have good morals when they grow up. But how many know that God doesn't just want your children and your family to have God morals. God wants you to have an adventure with him. God wants you to see uh, breakthroughs and victories. God wants you to see miracles, signs, and wonders. But, but, it, but, it, but it begins with you and I getting a fresh revelation of the word of God. It's understanding. And please, get my heart today. Because I know that it's so easy to be a spectator in church and you're just hearing the next message that's going to tickle me, Elmo, and you feel better about yourself. And you're like, ah, ha, ha, right, and all that, which is cool. I love it. Laugh. But I want to get us to the place where, where, where we're so uh, spiritually formed and developed, where we understand the, the anatomy of our miracle, the anatomy of our breakthrough, the anatomy of our blessing, that we understand the process and not only understand it, but we're willing to, to not only to begin to walk on that word, but we begin to see the word come through. That's where we got to come to, church. If not, you'll just keep going from church to church because you're bored. And there's no life in that. So the difficult part is the in-between, but God always brings a word from heaven. Always. Listen, he always brings a word from heaven when you're ready to hear it. Look at Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, quickly. In verse 16, he says this. He says, thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power, they shall lie down together, they shall not rise. They are extinguished, they are quenched like a wick. So you know what he's doing right now? Isaiah is looking at the children of Israel who are so sick and tired of hearing another word. You know why? They're like Isaiah, bro, we've been at this for 40 years, man. 40 years we've been doing this whole circle thing. You know, how long have you been waiting for your healing? How long have you been waiting for the, 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 the family member that needs change? How long have you been waiting for your, your spouse to change? How long have you been waiting? And you're just like, I've already, I've already rode that roller coaster. I've already been on that merry-go-round. And then you just become just so tired and so desensitized. Like nothing, nothing sticks. You know, or it's that whole, that whole religious spirit. I know that. I know that. I know that. Or, or you end the sentence or you end the verse because we become so religious with just a bunch of information, but we no longer have a revelation of transformation of anything. We're just so intelligent with scripture, but we have, but we have no, no breakthrough. And so Isaiah is telling them, hey, guys, listen, uh, this, is the word, this is the word God's bringing you because I can see that you guys are down. God, God is saying to all of us here, you may be in a down season, but I'm bringing you a word in season that's going to bring you out from down. And look what he says. He says, do not remember the former things. Easier said than done. Because some of us are still stuck on last, last year's hurt, last year's pain. Some of us are still challenged with things that are happening even now currently. He says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. How many are ready for a new thing? Amen. Huh? Honestly, you're like, you're, okay, all right, it's all right. I'm ready for a new thing. And if you're already living the new thing, well, guess what? That new thing is already old. It's expired. So just say, I want a new thing. I want a new. So, so he says, behold, I, I will. And notice, he didn't say, I hope to do a new thing. He said, I will do a new thing. So we better start cooperating with I will. He says, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? Come on. Are you so, are you so stuck? Are you so, are you so desensitized that you don't even know that I'm trying to do something in you? And, and, and look, he says this. And now shall it spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even. Look, look. He's even saying, I'll even make. Listen, I know you're saying you're stuck. <laughs> listen, I can see the boulder in between your eyes. 
<laughs> but you know what I'll do for you, Mauricio? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I mean, God's like, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do that. You know what our problem is? Is that we don't want to do anything. We want God to do everything. Come on, I'm hoping and praying that that Elevate Church becomes so spiritually formed, so spiritually shaped, not perfect, but that we become so spiritually mature that we understand every season of life and that we realize that, you know what, this isn't a stuck season. This is, this is a, a form season. This is where God's, he's trying to stretch something new in me. He's, tra- he's redoing me. He's, he's renaming me. He's, he's renewing my mind. He's doing something new. But these people of Israel, they, they were so stuck. They were so used to this this captivity that they've lived all their life. Think about it. For 400 years, this is what they know. All they know is captivity, physical captivity. That's all they know. So I can totally understand in the natural how, how if you've lived this for 400 years, I, I can't hate because I know us like human nature. You know, some of us have been living certain things for a while, and that's all you know. And so if you've been poor forever and your family's family's been, and all you have these generations of poor, well, of course, you begin to be formed and shaped into that poor mindset. Well, that's the same thing with the children of Israel. So they had physical captivity. I don't think the church of today has any physical captivity of any form of slavery in the sense of like, you're free here today, right? You came here on your own free will. But I believe that today in the church, the captivity that we see is the captivity of our soul. Man, we're, we're captive in our minds, we're captive in our wills, and we're captive in our emotions. And when you're captive on the inside of you, listen, you don't have to have a physical battle, but you can have an internal one. And your soul can keep you in places, dark places, emotional brokenness. Man, I'll tell you, your soul can keep you in a place of depression, oppression. Your soul can keep you in places for a very long time. And God is saying, I want to do a new thing inside of you. Do you not know? Are, are you here? Yes. And, so, and so, so there's this soul captivity. And the problem is that because you've been there so long in this soul issue, you're in the middle of your in-between. You're like, man, I, okay, God, I, like, yeah, I, I, I want to get my healing. But, but you need a word from heaven. Because if my faith is my bridge and, and nothing was created or nothing was made that was made without the word, then I better get a word from heaven. It's not enough for you to be spoon-fed anymore with the word of God. you got to open up your burning bush called the Holy Bible, and you let God begin to speak to you, Moses. Amen? Amen. That's what God wants to do with you. God bless all ten of you. We're going to give you a free drink today. Oh, amen. It's going to be awesome. Come on, look at your number and say, God's preparing you. Please listen to me today. This is not, this is not normal church today. Please listen to me. Isaiah... Isaiah was preparing the people of Israel. He was preparing them, constantly preparing them. Do you know if you're just coming to church, hit or miss here and there, you are missing your preparation for the new season that God has for you. You can't miss preparation. The people of Israel had to be in form and they had to be present for God to constantly bring them a word in season. God wants to constantly prepare us for the next season of our life. But we need a word from heaven to get us from here to there. So many of us, we just like, okay, God, get me over there. But you don't want to build the bridge by faith. And so I, I, I totally get that. But let's, let's work on that today. Can we just work on that today just a little bit? So the people of Israel, they're hearing this Isaiah prophet. And you could just imagine, I've already heard that before. <laughs> I already got that podcast. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've already read that book. Um, yeah, you know, actually, you know what? I was at a different church last week, and I heard that same message. So, so you know what they were basically saying? We're tired. And I, I, I'm exhausted to even hear another word. I, I just can't. I, you, you know, honestly, Pastor, the only reason I'm here today is because they invited me, and they said to take me out to eat after church. And, and, and so, you know, without even knowing, we can, we can become so comfortable with just hearing messages and, and, and reading our Bible. And, and, and those are all great things, God, guys. Don't get me wrong. But, but, but sitting in here, but you got deaf ears. 
your spiritual ears are closed. They're shut. Your, your spiritual eyes are blind. And, and, and God's saying, I, I want you to know it. I not only want you to know it. He says, don't you see I'm doing something new? Come on. God said, I want you to see it. So these guys were tired of walking. They were tired of hearing. They were exhausted. They didn't want to do the work anymore. Okay, we already did 40 years of this. Come on, it doesn't work. And so we get in that place. But guess what? God, but God, regardless of your weakness, regardless of how tired you are, God will still speak. Man, God will still speak to you, and it will be awesome. And he's just waiting for the day that you'll finally listen. Hopefully it's not too late. Hopefully it's not like 10 years later, you're finally, okay, praise you. And then you're, and then you're angered because it took you so long to hear it. Perfect story. Do you guys remember the story of Jericho? You remember that? So, so you had Joshua. Joshua gets a word from heaven. Once again, God's giving them a promise, right? And so now they had an in-between too. They had a problem. So they get to the, to the, to the promised land to, 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 to take, overtake Canaan. But the problem was that they had big walls they had to go ahead. They had a barrier in front of them. So once again, they said, we're stuck. Dang, again? Now look at this. I want to read this with you, Joshua 6. And then I'm going to go ahead and wrap this baby up real good. You ready? Put on your seatbelts. Now Jericho was securely shut up. Look at you and be like, shut up. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. Why was it shut up? See, let, let me tell you something. The reason that doors that you've been believing God for are not opening is not because you lack potential. It's because you're a child of God. You got to understand that. See, when you finally come to the maturity, the reason I'm constantly going through these constant battles and troubles and challenges and all this stuff that happens to me, it's, it's only for one reason. Because I'm a child of the most high God and the enemy hates that. And so God gives us Bible verses that tells us of people that have already been where you want to go. And he says, now Jericho was securely shut up. In other words, no one's getting in, no one's getting out, right? And he says, and he says, verse 2, and the Lord said to who? Joshua. And the Lord gave a word, and the Lord spoke a word. And the Lord said to Joshua, see. Everybody say, see. He says, see. I want you to see. I have given Jericho into your hand. It's king and the mighty men of valor. You shall what? March. So he's going to give you marching orders. Come on. Every single time that you're ready to go to the next season, you better expect there's marching orders that come with that. It ain't just going to be like, okay, wave of a hand, be healed. No. Marching orders. He gave them marching orders and he says, I want you to march around the city and all you men of war, you shall go all around the city once and this you shall do for how many days? You'll do this for six days. Verse 4, and seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city. How many times? Seven times. So I got to walk around a building for six days, okay? And then on the seventh day, we got to walk around that building seven times. And he says, and it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout. But not just any shout. They shall shout with a great shout. They shall shout with a great shout. Okay. And it says, and then, and then, <laughs> see, until you receive the word and until you begin to step into that word, there will never be, and then, and then the wall of the city will fall down flat. Now, here's some interesting things. Let me give you some facts. When Joshua gave this word to the, to the people of Israel, he didn't give them his, uh, uh, details. They, they got to the walls and they said, yo, Joshi, I thought you said that God said that we're taking this over. And Joshua's like, we are taking it over. Well, then why are there two layers of walls and we can't get in? See, because when you think about the walls of Jericho, there was the outer wall and then there was the inner wall. And so they said, well, come again. Uh, did he say walls or did he, did he say wall? 
He said, the walls are coming down. Okay, so <laughs> we're stuck basically, right, Josh? And Joshua's like, no, here's what you got to do. Here's the word from the Lord. You need to walk around six times for six days. You need to walk around this. That's like me on a Sunday morning telling you, hey, guys, we found a building. Praise God. And yet the whole church goes wild, right? <sighs> Let's try that real quick. Hey, guys, we found a brand new church building. But we don't have any money. <laughs> so, so what I need you to do <laughs> um, is I need you to go right now to the Vons building that's, that's empty now. And I need you to walk around it for the next six days. Let me tell you something. I bet that everybody would probably show up, probably 99% because you always have that one, you know, uh, will show up and be like, yeah, hey. But come day two, it'll lessen. Come day three, it'll, you know why? Because, because the word requires work. You got to learn how to start working the word. And a lot of us, we, we just don't want to work any word. We're, I mean, it's your word, God. You better just do it. And so he says to him, here's what's going to happen. You guys are going to have to go ahead, and you're going to have to go, go around. Now, God gave Joshua, he gave him the, 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 the design for the miracle, but he didn't give the people of Israel the details on how it's, how it's going to happen. He just said, y'all, the word is just walk around six, for six days. And so I could only imagine how day one could have been. They're walking in a circle, right, and nothing's happening, and they're probably thinking, this is crazy. Day one, like all of us would. We'd probably be like day one, like, man, are you sure Pastor Misha, did, did you hear from God? You know, day one, like, okay. Man, just come on. Let's respect the leadership. Just do it. Okay, okay, cool. Day, day two, I walk in like, dude, man, so why are we doing this again? Yeah, yeah then pastor said we're going to get a new building. Oh, wow. I mean, this is kind of stupid. Huh? I mean, does he, have, does he have a financial plan? Yeah. Uh, you heard him say, you say you got no money. Then why are we doing this stupid? No money, no buy. Okay, day three. This ain't going to work. Uh, this ain't going to happen. He's got, man, is his head straight on? Uh, there, there's no, day four. Hey, has anything happened yet? No. Man, I, I just, I don't see this happening for us. Man, let me go talk to pastor again. <laughs> day, just think, just, I can keep going. Day five, day six. You know what? The problem with so many believers and 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 can i just can we just imagine a little bit i mean god gave us a beautiful thing called imagination how many believe with with show of hands in, in all honesty because those people had nothing on us they were human people just like us regular folk working folk families children the whole thing how many believe that there is a great possibility that within those six days many of them left how many believe that? How many think that everybody stuck it through and everybody was just praising God all? <laughs> think about it. And when you think about when God wants to do something in you and through you, when he places you in a place called Elevate, the place you call home, I wonder how many people left on the sixth lap when they're about to reach their number seven. So many of us quit at the six, not realizing that your seventh lap is just right around the corner. Why? Because you get exhausted. I've already been praying. We've already fasted. Man, we did. Look, look how skinny I am. Look, we've already been. I, there's no more in me. I can't do this no more. I fasted. I've prayed. Nothing's changed. Everything. See, that, that, that's where God says, listen, I just bring you the word. Your job is to obey it. Many times we're in the place, our in-between is the place of disobedience. And consequence. So we have to get back to obeying God's word. Take his word for it. Run with it. And then we understand that on the seventh day, man, I'll tell you, it was the most amazing thing. Because they, sh they, sh they, they sounded the trumpet. And when the trumpet, man, sounded, the whole people began to just, bam, they gave God a big shout of praise. And we know that the wall fell flat not just the first layer the second layer you know why because just here's here's what i believe i believe that if the pe people of israel were here today they would say elevate church let me tell you something 
Just because you don't see, just because you don't see it doesn't mean that God's not doing something right now. Just because you can't see, it started with Joshua hearing from heaven, I, I, I want you to see I'm giving you the land. I want you to see I'm giving you the healing. You know what? What, what, is, what barrier is keeping you from seeing your healing through? What barrier is keeping you? What limitation are you living behind that you're not allowing God to bring out the fullest potential inside of you? I believe that the children of Israel would, would probably look at us and say, hey, listen, your barrier is going to end up being your blessing. Come on. What the enemy meant for bad, God's going to turn it around for your good. Your barrier. What barrier is in front of you right now? <laughs> and we know they got their, their blessing. But how do I do that, Pastor? What do I do? Look, here, here's Matthew 6, It says, but put God's kingdom first. Do what he wants you to do. Then, ever say then. Then all those things will also be what? Given to you. He's saying put God first. Put God first. And then those things that you're believing him for, those things that you're trusting him for, he says, I'll give them to you. I, I, I will bless you. But you got to learn how to put God first. You know, um, I heard this from my pastor years ago, and he said it was a true story, so I'm going to believe it was a true story, um, that it was pretty powerful. Um, and it's something that always stuck to me. And, and, and here's what he said. He said, you know, there was this lady who was in her church. And, and you know what? It was a very small congregation. But she showed up to church and, and, um, and they had, you know, services where you can testify. You know, and so uh, if you had a testimony, if, if something amazing happened between you and God, you know, you'd get up in the middle of the service and be like, I got a testimony. I want to testify. And so she started testifying that the weekend before, she, she was at a very low place and and she only had a little bit of money. And, uh, and, and when the tithes and offering moment came, she, she realized, wow, this is, this is all I have. And I have no food. I have no groceries. But, but how much further can, can I take this? And, uh, and so she said, I'm just going to give it. So she gives the money into the offering basket. And, and she's like, okay. She just felt like, oh, that's what God told me to do. Okay, I feel impressed to do that. She did that. Then she goes home. She walks into her house. And she goes straight for the fridge because you know what? She just, she's just believing in miracles, right? And so she, she goes to the refrigerator and she opens it up. What do you think happened? Nothing. There was nothing in it. It was empty. <laughs> it was completely empty. And, and let me tell you something. Many times God gives you a word. And you're excited when he gave it to you. You even sow a seed into it like, yeah. But then you go home and you open the fridge to your reality. You open the fridge to your reality. That broken family, that lack of finances, that messed up career, that, 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 that challenged child and your reality. See, that's where you have to begin to apply your faith on that word and stop denying the word that God gave you. And so she opened her fridge and it was as empty as it was before she got there. And, but, but listen, but in this woman, she started singing an old hymn and, and it went a little something like this. I've got a feeling everything's gonna be alright. Oh, I got a feeling everything's gonna be alright oh I got a feeling everything's gonna be alright be alright be alright be alright and so you know she was a sister <laughs> and you know she had a little hmm 
Everything is going to be all right. Be all right. Be all right. And she closed her fridge. And you know what? At that moment, true story, okay? Every single day, for a few days, she'd be working out front of the garden, back of the garden yard. And she'd be saying, everything's going to be all right. Singing this song over and over and over. Everything's going to be all right. Everything. And her neighbor was an atheist. And he was ticked. Man, can you imagine just hearing a woman, a black woman on top of that, just like singing her gospel, everything's going to be all right. Be all right. Be all right. right? Doing her thing, right? He was so sick of it, okay? You know what he did? He went to the grocery store. And he said, I'm going to trick this woman real good. She go, he goes and he buys all, all kinds of groceries. And he said, I'm going to leave the groceries. Mind you, this was his little idea, his plot, his plan. And I'm going to prove to her that her God is just an imagination. It doesn't exist. And so he went and he put all the groceries there. And, and he was like a little kid. And he rang the doorbell. And he took off. And he just went and hid behind the, 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 the bushes. And she opened the door and she screamed god did it god did it god did it he did it for me <laughs> and then that brother came out of the bush he said no he didn't no he didn't no he didn't i did it and she said no god did it no i did it she said no god did it he said no look 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 i got my bonds receipt and look i paid for it with my money look my name right there credit card number right there my money ha ha no he ain't gonna be all right he ain't nothing's all right and and so just think <laughs> and she said give me that and she said "Woo!" and God did it and he said no I I did it God did it, and the devil paid for it. <laughs> hey! What well, the devil meant for bad, God is going to turn around for your good. But you got to begin to get a shout with a great shout. Come on, stand to your feet. Give him right. a great shout and just say, well, come on. I got a feeling everything's going to be. that teaches me I don't care how God does it I just care that he'll do it I don't care but as long as I'm in the hand of the Father God shape me mold me change me expand me and help me get the revelation that one word from heaven can change me Everything's going to be all right. But you got to start singing that from your heart. I'm going to be okay. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Come on, just sing that out together. I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Oh. Everything's gonna be alright. Come on, open that fridge. Oh, I've got a feeling everything's gonna be alright. Be alright. Be alright. Be alright. Come on, can you see it already? I have a feeling everything's gonna be alright. I've yeah. got a feeling everything's gonna be alright. Everything's gonna be alright. Oh, I got a feeling. Everything.
Give the Lord a big hand clap and just say yes. He will do it. He will do it. And that same attitude, if you're here today and you don't have a personal relationship with the God who will do it. I'm not inviting you to religion. I'm inviting you to the greatest relationship you'll ever have with anyone in this entire world in your earthly existence. His name is Jesus. You don't need more peace. You don't need more money. You don't need more friends. You need more Jesus. Because once you have Jesus, you have everything. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.